Hi everyone, Natasha here and around my home today I am in my office looking out at a beautiful spring day. We had a gorgeous sunrise this morning. It lasted just a few minutes so I was so happy that I was able to catch it so I could share it with you. And besides that, I'm up here in my office getting ready to finish up some of my plans for quarter two and share with you a little more about how I'm setting up for this new quarter and how I've progressed in setting things up for the month of April in my disc bound planner from Jane's Agenda. So stay tuned for that and welcome to my office. Welcome back to my home. I'm so glad you're joining me today for another planner video. If you're in the Midwest area, you might be experiencing some of the same chill that came through here. We had quite a severe thunderstorm yesterday evening, so we went from 80 degrees yesterday to about 45 degrees today, but all of that rain washed some of the pollen out of the air, so my spring allergies are subsiding a little bit. And meanwhile, I've been busy working on a lot of home projects, recovering from the busy tax season, and getting things more set up and evolved here in my planner. So grab yourself something cozy to drink. If you want to grab your planner and flip through things together, then we can see how we're working through the month of April. So to start out with, this is just a pen pouch I had on hand. I don't remember where I got it. I want to say it was a freebie from something, but I'm using purple in a lot of my accessories this year because that's my color of the year. So I thought, well, this makes sense to grab that. And it's a pretty spring pouch. And then of course I have my disc bound planner. This cover is from Live Love Posh. I'll have that linked below. I have two inch gold discs from Jane's Agenda and the majority of my inserts and tabs and dividers are all Jane's Agenda as well. And I am a Jane's Agenda affiliate. So I'll have my affiliate link in case you wanna shop and check out some of the items there. I always appreciate your support through my affiliate link. So let's talk about quarter two. If you watched my last video, I shared how the first quarter of this year not only was a time where I felt like I needed some rest and recovery, it was also really busy. And lately, several other people have mentioned to me that the first quarter of this year, they were just swamped. Their schedule was full. They had a lot of work things going on. So it seems like it wasn't just me that felt like the first quarter was so busy. There really wasn't brain space, at least for me, to think about setting up my annual goals or doing a vision board or anything like that. So now things have slowed down a little bit, especially the second half of April. And I feel like I'm finally getting the chance to think about how I want the rest of the year to go. I was actually able to set up some goals. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. But I first wanna just show you how the rest of my April setup uh, has evolved. So I'm using the cover from Jane's Agenda and I did put a little bit of that sticky tack or that museum putty on the card to hold that in place. So this beautiful, bright, colorful floral is just so pretty when I open up my planner. It's always inspiring to see this. And I basically have the beginning stuff set up about the same. I am using my inbox just a little bit more. And lately I've had, again, I think just because we've slowed down, I've been able to think about some of these bigger projects that pop into my mind at random times. And I've finally gotten them down on paper here on my inbox insert. And that feels good just because when I have time or when I'm looking for that next big project, I know that this is a place I can go. Something else I've done is to use the cleaning inserts that came from the April Deluxe subscription box from Jane's Agenda. So I have the April um, bingo card in here and I just grabbed a bunch of those little circle sticky notes and my thought is as I complete things, I can just cover it up and that way I can make the card reusable. They can just overlap a little bit, which is fine. And actually, I can finally check one thing off. I think there's several things on here I sort of started but haven't finished. So we have a little decorative fish pond, and I was able to get that open yesterday. I got the uh, filter all set up again for the spring and summer season. Since we don't have pets, that was my little task. So that's fun. I've finally gotten a start on that. So then I have the next three tabs are routine-based tabs. So I have this initial one where it says my routines. 
like I mentioned, I have that little April cleaning card there. Then my weekly overview, I'm using this weekly cleaning schedule from Jane's Agenda, which I really like. It was kind of doing some of the same things as the one I had made myself, and I just wanted to give hers a try, partly because I love the paper that Jane's Agenda inserts come on. It's a little bit heavier than what mine is that I just use for my printer here at home and has that nice smooth texture. So what I did was go through, think about my morning and evening cleaning routines. And I like that this is pulling out just cleaning. So it's not necessarily work related things or like my journaling that I do up here in my office. It's truly just the cleaning chores that I have around the house. And it's helping me to get these done early before I head up here to my home office, which has been a nice shift because I kind of was bouncing around and then not getting anything done. So doing it this way has helped a lot. And I also went back to some of my fly lady basics and just looked at my morning and evening routine for the fly lady. And I'll just kind of note these letters here are just the types of laundry. I feel like this month has really been a good reset for getting back on track with my cleaning schedules. And then I took the fly lady daily focus items. So Monday is weekly home blessing hour. Tuesday is plan and play. Wednesday is anti-procrastination day. Thursday is errands. And for me, I also make that the day that I wash my car because it's close to several errands is to run through the car wash. And then I can vacuum it out as well and kind of clean it up. Um, Friday is when we clean out backpacks, my work bag, my purse. And then Saturday is family fun or sometimes we'll work on some projects around the house. And Sunday is our spirit renewal day. And for this month, I'm also trying to make it a day where I do less work because it's really easy for me to find all the projects around the house to be constantly working on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so I'm trying to really be focused on slowing down on Sundays, like even so much as having something going in the crock pot so I don't feel like I have to cook so much or wash so many dishes and spending more time together as a family. And then I chose this week box for a place to put my zone items that I wanted to pull out and remember to do. So this is working well to have that new tracker in there. Now the one thing I'm a little still sort of undecided on is these are my zone cleaning trackers and I'll link the video below where you can get the free printable that has these. So I like these because they're basically set up like the fly lady zones are so they coordinate really well with how I'm used to doing zone cleaning. But what we got in the April deluxe subscription box from Jane's Agenda was essentially a detailed, a more detailed zone cleaning set of inserts that are broken down by room. So it's not so much like the fly lady zones. I group together my dining room, my parlor, and my front entryway all as one zone, but this is broken down more detailed. So I'm not sure yet if I'll end up keeping these in here. I kind of stuck them in there to see if I feel like I want to focus on one room at a time and really go through here because a lot of the tasks are overlapping. They're the same kinds of tasks I would do anyway. So if it feels like it's just redundant and I like my original ones better, then I'll just take these out and switch back to those. Then I have a tab for affirmations. And what I've decided to do is I don't tell myself I have to do these every day. I just sort of flip to this tab if I feel like doing it and I will pick which one I want to do. So these are health and wellness. These are mindfulness and presence. And these are wealth. So I can pick some from each page. I, I like all of them. And so I just decided to keep them all in here and use them as I feel like it. Then we get into the month of April. So I'm using the vellum and the beautiful floral to introduce the month of April. And this was a quote like a little prayer that I heard and I liked that. So I wrote that on the cover and this is how the month of April has laid out for me. I didn't end up going in to do much decorating. I did add my word of the month, which is intuition and my affirmation. And those both come from the Louise Hay colors and numbers book. I also have my personal number noted here. So there's a video linked in the description that talks about how I use that book to help plan my wardrobe and help me use it for daily, monthly, and annually focus uh, words and affirmations. And then I've 
pretty much gotten the schedule in here. So basically I add things as I hear about them. I haven't used this week column much at all this month, which is fine. I'm just noting things elsewhere. My, I'll talk a little bit more about this when I get to the goals section, but this is how I'm using the back part of that page. So I have my personal and home related tasks on the left and my business and other tasks on the right. And I plan to use this top section for a monthly review after the month of April is over. And it worked out really well because I'm also doing the Master Plan 365 program that Jane's Agenda is running, which is free, and I love that. So you can go watch the weekly videos. We started April 1st, and you can jump in at any point. You can go back and watch them all if you want to, or just start wherever we are. And she has walked us through some different steps for building goals, and that helped me a lot. This week, I really, I went back and re-listened to the last several weeks, and it just finally got some things clicking in my brain. So I'll talk about that as I get into the goal section a little bit more. Then I have my personal monthly page here. This is again from that Louise Hay Colors and Numbers book. So that's the same in, uh, the same word intuition and the same affirmation. And then these are just the details that talk about it and the color key. And then that's going into this weekly spread. So if you've seen my last um, gosh, probably for the last six months, I've been using the Jane's Agenda daily inserts. Um, it was the executive inserts for many months. And then I think in November or December, we got a set of daily inserts, or maybe I bought them. I can't remember. <laughs> Somehow or another, I had daily inserts from Jane's Agenda that took me through the first quarter, but I forgot that they only took me through the first quarter. So at the end of my last video, I mentioned how I needed to get those daily pages. Well, I went to go get them and realized I don't have any more daily pages. So I decided instead of buying more daily pages, one of the things I've been noticing is I felt like my planner, I was spending a lot of time like writing lists and making notes, but I wasn't always feeling very productive. So I thought maybe it's time to take a break from the daily pages. As much as I like that feeling of a clean slate for each day, March was such a busy month that there were a lot of days that I just never had a chance to even get into my planner and make notes. Like I was just too busy doing, I didn't have time to plan. So I grabbed this set of inserts. This is a weekly, um, I'll try to link it. It's a weekly undated where you have the seven days of the week on the left. It's Jane's agenda, but I don't remember what the number of this design is, but there's the seven days and each day has a separate column, these three columns. So you can use those however you want. Then this right hand side is your weekly dashboard. So you have priorities and promises to buy or order bills and finances, email and phone, and then a place you could do something for each day of the week. Like I'm using it for menu planning, a little habit tracker, a section for notes, and of course this big to-do list. So it was really refreshing to sit down and set up this spread at the beginning of the month. And I felt like it was the change that I needed Part of what I noticed when I did my quarterly check-in was that I felt like I needed something that was a little quicker and faster to plan, but also limited the amount of tasks I could write down because I will forever fill up a to-do list. <laughs> so having just a limited space for each day made me really think carefully about what I was going to put on there. And at the same time, I did have this long section over here. So if I just needed to brain dump, I could do that. And I'll kind of keep flipping to show you how the weeks have progressed. So like obviously this week, I really had a lot of items that I put on that longer to-do list. But you can see here on the daily page, I only had certain days where I was able to get a lot done. And sometimes I just didn't bother transferring it over. And that was fine too. I felt like this was a really good happy medium between having a place for a weekly overview, but then still having sort of a daily section I could look at. Now, having said that, as the month has progressed, I am kind of feeling like I fill up the page quite a bit, and sometimes it's just a lot to look at, and it's kind of busy. So I think in the May Deluxe subscription box, there is a different set of inserts that is, I think, a day on two days on a page. So I'm excited to try that now for the month of May and see if that feels like a good 
maybe step up from this weekly page where everything's on one page for the week, but not quite so much as a daily page. And also I switched to this today dashboard, also from Jane's Agenda. I used one of her sticky pockets to put the color coding key on here. And then what's been working good is I keep a few sticky notes on here that can be a shopping list per store. So I started adding my errands over here. In my last video, I mentioned that was kind of a struggle as I never had a good place for my errands. So earlier this week, I had a sticky note up here that had all of the errands, like all of the places I need to go. So I used that, took that off. And then meanwhile, this was something I kept thinking of, things that I can only get at a certain store. So I started writing those there. And I do have a shopping list that lives on the side of our fridge that the whole family can add to. But when I was at work, these were things that popped up. So it was nice to have a place to put that. And I can always take that into the store with me. So this is the week we're in currently. And I'm just now finishing my, I actually did finish my quarter two goals and refresh. So I feel like I finally sort of set that system up and have a better handle on it. So we'll be talking about that next. And I'm almost done with this office cleanup. That was really something that I felt like my space at home here, multiple spaces, multiple rooms were just so much too cluttered, too many piles, too many things I hadn't dealt with that just needed to be either cleaned up or organized or put away or decluttered all the things. And because this first quarter was so busy, I just never got around to it. So once tax season was over after this Monday, the 15th, I really made it my focus this week since my work schedule was dramatically lighter to spend time every day trying to declutter and get things cleaned up. And here I'll show you what next week is looking like. I'm also getting back to planning two weeks ahead. So that feels good that I've got things laid out and have my basic plan and my basic schedule on here for next week. And I've also added a couple of items I don't want to forget. And then the very last page is dot grid. So I also decided to take out my memories page. I kept adding this monthly memories page because for a few months I did it and I liked it. But the last three months I haven't kept up with it. So I thought, why am I trying to do that? I don't have time for it or it's not important to me. But I do have this blank page back here. So if I decide I want to put either my monthly review back here or some memories or both. There's room to do that. All right, so then let's look at the personal section of my planner. So after listening to the Master Plan 365 videos and just really slowing down, doing that review, and through my review process for this quarter, I really thought about the wins and the things that were working the things that needed improvement or didn't seem to be working anymore. And I also listed out, I don't know, 10 areas of my life that I felt like were kind of the different areas I always have some sort of a focus on and rated those zero to 10. And that was a quick exercise, but it also gave me a really useful snapshot as to what areas of my life I need to shift some more focus back onto because they were pretty low. <laughs> they were rated low. So in doing that quarterly review, some of the things that I noticed and I made a note to myself was that I need to focus more on getting better rest and more rest and having better family time. I, I was working so much, it was just hard to do both of those. So now... I feel like it's time to put focus back on that. Also to focus on better sleep and nutrition and health. I have come to the realization that I am definitely in perimenopause and there's some symptoms that have cropped up that I, I guess I wasn't worried or thinking it was a big deal, but when I was really stressed in the month of March, all of a sudden all of these symptoms were just so much more and made life that much harder and it was sort of compounding all the <laughs> stress and anxiety I already had. So I really felt like it's time to sort of get back to some balance and some more healthy um, habits to take care of myself. I also realized I need to get our house cleaned up and back to some better routines, like just getting back to my fly lady routines and slowing down to where every morning I'm taking the time to do a little bit of house cleaning and keeping up with things definitely feels better. So I'm glad that I have made some of these shifts already and I'm just going to continue working on them. We took a sort of impromptu family vacation, a little staycation 
the weekend before, like the Easter weekend, basically, we were gone Thursday and Friday and came home sun, uh, Saturday, the Saturday before Easter. So that little time away was definitely needed. I mean, I was really stressed leading up to even just trying to leave that Thursday morning and just overwhelmed and tired and feeling like everybody needed my time and all my jobs <laughs> needed my time. Like it just was a lot for the month of March. So finally, you know, we had this little time away as a family and it was so good. It was re just rejuvenating. I felt like it was the downtime and the reconnection we all needed. So it made me be more conscious now that I think we need to plan some specific family fun things like that. Just things we can do in a day in our area. But we need to have those on the calendar and looking forward to them because that is part of just having a better mental outlook is to know you have some good things coming. And I think our whole family could benefit from that. So that was one of the other items I noted to work on as I go into quarter two. Okay, so then I made finally made my quarter or my 2024 goals. I started this as a quarter two goal sheet and then I realized, well, really, these are my goals for the whole year. And part of what Jane talked about in, it was week two, the week two training for the Master Plan 365. I know all about SMART goals and yet somehow this, this year, I just really couldn't get a handle on like, what are my goals for the year? I think I was struggling to put pen to paper because I really just didn't know. And I kind of felt like, why am I doing this? And what is the point? And so her training from week two really resonated with me. And I had a lot of aha moments. Plus I have been listening to the book Atomic Habits, which has been on my to read list for a long time. So I'm glad to finally be reading that. And there are so many helpful and interesting aspects to that book. It's not just about habits. It's a lot of science and reasonings why, you know, some of the things you're doing can really make such a big impact in your life. So that all of those things helped me finally sit down and create my goals for the year. And what she talked about was that your goal is the desired outcome. It's, it's how you're going to be living your life as close as you can to your dream life. And what does that look like? So it doesn't necessarily have to have all of the details and all of the steps. It just needs to be that desired outcome. So thinking that way gave me the permission to just write down the outcome in the three areas of my life, my business, my personal, and my home. Then I was able to sit down and break those areas out into some specific tasks and quarterly and monthly steps that I could take to be working towards the goal. So part of that SMART goal is to have something measurable, but for me, you can't really measure you know, a feeling, but I can measure the fact that I'm doing these steps and working toward the feeling. So that's what I'm focused on. So I have one goal for my social media business and then another business goal that's just for my Jordan Essentials business. And then my personal goal, this one's a little bit harder for me to calculate, but I know when it's working and when I'm doing things right. And it worked out so well because this month, Jordan Essentials launched a whole new line of products on Saturday, April 6th, we had this little super, super Saturday launch. So one of the things that they came out with was a supplement, which we've never had supplements before. We have lots of great topical magnesium products. And I've often used like our topical magnesium lotion before bed. I use it after my shower from the neck down and it helps me feel tired and fall asleep easily. But I think because of some of these perimenopause symptoms, I wake up a lot in the middle of the night, usually anywhere between like 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. And once I'm up, I use the bathroom and then I just cannot go back to sleep. My mind starts going. I'm thinking of all the things. Sometimes I just get up for a while and then I'll take a nap later. But in the end, I was getting short on sleep a lot. So we now have these supplements, which are an herbal supplement. So there's magnesium, a little bit of melatonin, and there's two types. So there's the immediate release and the extended release, which I think that extended release is what's really helping me be able to go back to sleep when I do wake up in the middle of the night. There's lemon balm, there's the ashwagandha. So it's a really good blend. And I have noticed that if I take this on a regular time frame, about 8.30, then by 9 o'clock, I'm tired, I'm ready to go to back to sleep. And like I said, the key thing is, 
when I wake up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, which is still happening, but now I feel tired and I want to go right back to sleep and I don't have that problem of wanting to stay awake for the rest of the day. <laughs> so, Because I don't have to get up at 3 a.m. My husband gets up at 3.30 for work, but that's a different story. So anyway, so I was really glad that we came out with this. We already had this st- sleep stick and the sleep spray, but now this supplement is like just the extra little boost I needed to help me get more sleep. And I have kind of boosted up my supplement regimen and I'm trying to take a few more things that I've seen as recommendations for perimenopausal hormone support. And getting a book read has been something that I've been wanting to do for months. And finally, now because of the Master Plan 365, I'm listening to an audiobook version of Atomic Habits and it's happening and I'm excited to feel like I'm actually doing that. So to me, those are enough Um, things that I can sort of measure and say, yes, I'm taking my supplements daily. Yes, I'm using the Magnesy and getting a better night's sleep. And then I'm working on reading that book. And then for my home, I, like I mentioned, it was just so overwhelming and messy and like cluttered. I just would walk in and instantly feel stressed because I would just look at all these things that were telling me they needed to be dealt with. So what I started with is my office because I'm up here a lot. I need to use this space for getting work done, but it was piling up with all these things I wasn't dealing with. So I made myself um, back here in the April section, I made myself like weekly sections to focus on. And I thought if I can just get through like this, my Jordan Essentials stock and supplies that were kind of like everywhere and no rhyme or reason, I got that done one week and I didn't even have like a big plan going into the month. I just wrote this all out today, but that's essentially what I had done. And then the next week I was finalizing our taxes. So I had gone through all my paperwork and then the third week the taxes were done. So then I was trying to make sure the filing and the storage of all the papers was really in better shape. So now what's left in my office is just some remaining piles that this next week, that's going to be my focus. And I also made an effort to make my kitchen look better and feel better because that's the room what we all walk into from the outside. So walking into that space feeling better has just been a nice breath of fresh air. So then let me find, okay, so that's where we were for that. And I've gotten back to my fly lady routines like we've already talked about. And then I'm continuing to do monthly meal planning. So that is good. That's continuing on and I'm just going to keep doing that. And this was just some notes I had jotted down. At one point, I was listening to the Master Plan 365, and I really just felt like I need to start making some notes and get some stuff down. So this was kind of the first go around, and then I went through and made it a little more um, detailed through these inserts. So that is my April setup and updates. You can see my planner is pretty full, but I can still... If I can find the right spot... There we go. I can still get it to close, and I still love having this cover where I can just fold the back onto itself and, you know, write on whatever page I'm working on. And the other thing I have today is, of course, this is the separate notebook I started for the Master Plan 365 program, and I'm just keeping my inserts in there. So I showed this last video, but I thought I'd give you the little bit of an update. So this is the cover page, and I just taped that little card in there from this month's box. And these were some tabs I had on hand from Jane's Agenda. And I thought, oh, perfect, because they just say the number one, two, three, four. So that is how um, the Master Plan 365 inserts are set up. They're not necessarily by January, February, March. It's just, there's just month one. So it's been good to have this. I've been making notes as we go along. And it's just enough um, organization and guidance, but it's not a lot. It doesn't feel like it's hard to get in here and take care of, you know, making some notes and listening and checking some things off. I want to do it each week. And then I used the divider from this month, the page finder, to be my little page marker in here. So now that I have this, I wanted to show you the final thing is I got my month two inserts in. So I thought we could just do this really quick unboxing if they want to call it an unboxing. The other thing I grabbed were was one more set of the scissors. I like these scissors so much I got another pair for my office at uh, work and then I decided I wanted one down in our kitchen because the pair we have down there is a little bit bigger but it's pretty dull and I liked how the tip on these is a finer tip 
and they're a little bit sharper and I kind of have them tucked where I don't think anyone else in the family realizes they're there. <laughs> so the pair that's down in the kitchen is like my little secret stash to have a nicer pair of kitchen scissors. And then I got these gold corner, um, corner, what are these called? Photo stickers, corner stickers in gold, just because I liked having the gold. So I thought this might work good if I do end up making an actual vision board where I have some, some pictures or some cutouts or something that I, and these were on clearance. So I just decided to grab those. Okay. So here is month two from the master plan 365. So we'll just go ahead and get this tucked right in here. And I'm really glad that I had these inserts, these um, divider tabs on hand because they're beautiful and they work well with this little floral uh, theme that's going on. And we'll kind of flip through these. So she has these well thought out. Next month we're reading Make Time. And I'm excited to read that. I've not heard of it, but she was mentioning some things about it. And it sounds like it'll be an interesting read. And she did mention that month two has a little more to it because we're building as we go. So now that we've gone through some of the foundational things, then we're going to have just a little more in-depth training each week as we go along. Okay, so now I have my Master Plan 365 notebook set up. And sometimes I do bring this with me. Often I'm listening to the book at work at my accounting job. So this is thin enough and small enough. I can just tuck it in the work bag along with my regular planner. And that all works well. So that is the second half of my quarter two reset and my new start to the year here in the springtime. I hope that was helpful and interesting for you to see how I'm working through a fresh start in the spring and also the fact that my process has gone slow. So today is the 19th and I just now finished my goal setting and getting those details marked down in my planner. So just a reminder, it doesn't have to be done on the first. There's no rules. You can make it work however it works best for you at any given moment. And other than that, stay tuned because the next video I'll be sharing is the May Deluxe Planner subscription box from Jane's Agenda. So I'm excited to unbox that with you. And it's got me already looking forward to setting up my planner for a new month because I'm feeling better as we finish out this rest of April that I am off to a much better start now for the rest of the year. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button down below. I always appreciate you joining me. Have a good one and I'll see you next time. Bye.